Hello everybody, this is Mr. Bowman. Today we're going to be looking at the Alex topic, rewriting a quadratic function to find its vertex and sketch its graph. So uh, we need to rewrite this equation in vertex form, find the vertex and sketch the graph. Uh, these last two are going to be the easy bits. Putting this in vertex form is often the trickiest part of this process. But we're going to use a, a method called completing the square. So I'm going to rewrite my problem over here. So completing the square deserves a uh, video all by itself. So um, if you're not familiar with this process, you may need to to, uh, to look at that video. But uh, I'm going to run you through the quick version of how this works. So hopefully if you have seen it before, this helps jog your memory a little bit. So first thing is I want to move this constant to the other side. So I'm going to subtract the 47 over. And that leaves me with 2x squared plus 20x. And the reason for that is to get it to vertex form, I'm going to try to turn this side into a perfect square trinomial. And um, I need to add in a number here so that it's a perfect square trinomial. And 47 is not going to work. So I just shove it to the other side uh, for the time being. So before I get too far along here, I want to pull out that uh, A value because it's going to make my calculation a little trickier. So I'm going to just factor that out on the right side there. So now I need to figure out what I'm adding in into this next step. So to do that, I look at my new middle term after I factored it out. I'm going to divide it in half, then square it. So I'm going to take 10 divided in half is 5, squared is 25. So I'm going to add to 25 inside my parentheses, because that will turn my parenthetical part here into a perfect square trinomial. But I can't just willy-nilly add stuff into parentheses and one side of the equation, not the other. So I need to figure out what I actually added here so I can add to the other side. So since this is in the parentheses, it's when I distribute the 2 back in, it's also going to get multiplied. So if I did that, it would be 2 times 25, which is 50. So I really added 50 onto this side um, after I distribute. So I need to come to the left side and add 50 as well so that they're still equal by adding the same amount to both sides. Now I have negative 47 plus 50, which is just 3. And on this side, I'm going to leave the 2 there, but since this is a perfect square trinomial, I can factor it pretty easily. So it's the square root of the first term, so x squared goes to x, the sine of the middle term, and the square root of the last term, quantity squared. Now that I've factored it, I'm almost done. I just have to move this 3 back. So my vertex form looks like this. Okay. So I got through the completing the square process. The reason we do that is because it makes these next two parts quite simple. So what I need to do is I need to pull out my vertex. So the a value doesn't matter here. I'm just looking at these. So remember, we have to flip the sign of this one. So my vertex is at negative 5, and this one stays the way it is. So it's at negative 5, negative 3. So this is vertex form. Go ahead and label some of this. This is my vertex. And then to sketch my graph, give me some points here quickly. So I'm going to start by graphing that point. So I'm going to go to negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 3, is right about there, at negative 5, negative 3. And then I know because my two values are positive, it's going to be concave up, but I need to figure out a little more specific than that. So you can do that by just plugging in some points here. So uh, just so this doesn't run too long, let me pause here and I will get you those points. All right, so what I did here um, is I, let me scoot this down. I just plugged in negative 3, negative 4, negative 6, and negative 7 to get me some more points. So let's go ahead and put those on our graph now. So negative 4, negative 1, negative 6, negative 1, uh, negative 3, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and negative 7, 5. So my sketch of my graph then would look like that. 